So chapter 7, verse 4 through 17, is this instruction given to Nathan, the prophet, to then be delivered to David, the king, because David's thinking, hey, I'm going to go up onto Mount Moriah here, the high point, and I'm going to build a house to the Lord. Well, Nathan is given this, this speech, so to speak, to give to King David about why he shouldn't be the one to build that house, but God's going to build a house for David, and it'll be David's son Solomon who ends up building the temple here on the top of Mount Moriah. Just for orientation, Mount Zion right here is actually higher than Mount Moriah, so that's where Herod's palace is going to be built at the time of Jesus, um, just to kind of connect us Old Testament with New Testament. And also to connect to the New Testament, look at verse 14. This is an important one. <clears throat> God is saying to King David, I will be his father and he shall be my son. In the ancient world, the son of God literally meant the king. So when you look at the New Testament and people are calling Jesus the son of God, now definitely he is spiritually and physically the son of God. We are all children of God. That is all true, but because we sometimes think of it in such a literal fashion, we also miss that the title, son of God, I mean, right out of here, 2 Samuel 7, 14, this is a title of kingship. And so when the Jews were talking about Jesus as the Son of God, it was very clear that he's the Messiah, the Son of God, the King. Very, very clear. And it's interesting that this is part of the reason why the Jewish leaders were threatened by Jesus, is that he had this title of kingship, and they really didn't want him to be the king. They wanted to have power for themselves or to let the Romans dominate them, this foreign power. So, again, son of God, it means to be the king. 